Hello again, this is Katney with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over there to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is continuing to operate as an essential business under New York City Executive Order to provide assistance with the COVID-19 outbreak. Most employees are working remotely, while a few are working in the Adafruit factory to help manufacture and ship desperately needed PPE to the surrounding area. This week, Adafruit received a literal ton of plastic, so the Adafruit team and teams around New York City can continue manufacturing face shields for the New York City area and beyond. Thank you to Novalex for the donation. Noah and Pedro have been 3D printing headbands for face shields and shipped a set to Adafruit, where the team added the plastic shields and readied them for distribution. For more information and photos, check out the Adafruit blog and social media to find the latest updates. In the world of Python on hardware news, CircuitPython 5.1.0 Stable was released this week. It features MicroLab, a NumPy-like fast vector module that allows for performing mathematical operations 10 to 50 times as fast as CircuitPython alone, and F-strings, a more convenient way to build strings dynamically. These new features are enabled on nearly all the CircuitPython compatible boards except those with SAMD21 microcontrollers. It also includes two new CircuitPython compatible boards and various bug fixes. Check out the blog for more details and visit circuitpython.org to download it. A group of Stanford University computer science instructors are coming together as an active community service to offer their teaching services free of charge for people who want to learn introductory coding in Python. The course runs from April 13th to May 22nd and is available to those with no programming experience and time to dedicate to learning. The student application deadline is April 8th. The learning experience, called CS106A, Code in Place, will be an introductory programming course using the Python language, using material from the first half of Stanford University's established intro course. Code in Place requires no previous background in programming, just a willingness to work hard and a love for learning. Adafruit hardware is now being certified as open source. Adafruit is an open source hardware and software company. The Open Source Hardware Association provides a certification process, the results of which offer an easy and straightforward way to indicate that your hardware meets a standard for open source. To that end, we've been working on submitting certification applications for Adafruit hardware to Oshawa. We've submitted a significant number of applications, and we're super excited to announce that the first approvals have been granted. This week, 15 new boards were certified, all CircuitPython compatible microcontrollers. Check out the Oshawa Certified Projects directory for all the details. The CircuitBrains Deluxe by Null Byte Labs LLC has gone live on CrowdSupply. CircuitBrains Deluxe is the smallest solderable Atmel SAMD51 castellated module on the market at 29mm by 29mm. They've taken care of the tough work of pin mappings, power and decoupling layout, clock, flash, assembly, bootloader, and firmware. The core of CircuitBrains Deluxe is the Atmel SAMD51 J19 Cortex M4 microcontroller, and it ships with CircuitPython. Check out the campaign on CrowdSupply for more details. Sean Heimel shows how to build a temperature logger with the Adafruit Feather STM32F405 Express and the PCT2075 Stemma temperature sensor. Learn how to read data from analog sensors using an MCP3008 with a Raspberry Pi and the Adafruit Circuit Python library using Adafruit Blinka. Unlock four mysteries of the use of self in Python with a thorough post on Medium, including examples. Send emails using Python with a tutorial and accompanying YouTube video, including using a secure connection and Python's built-in SMTP lib to send basic emails. Learn how to create a virtual on-screen keyboard using Python and tkinter. Drew posted slides from a presentation he gave on MeGen, LightX, and how Python is useful for chip design. Esden live-streamed how LightX, based on MeGen, lets you use the power of Python for FPGA design. Sophie designed a dodecahedron made of custom-milled PCBs with 55 NeoPixel LEDs, all running CircuitPython. 
Create your own Godzilla monster light-up hand-washing sign in this Instructables posted by Caitlin's dad. The tutorial includes multiple examples of easily adding LEDs to different types of projects. Meet Alice, a Kinect-controlled FPV mini-tech powered by CircuitPython on an Adafruit Feather. In the Virtual RepRap Festival 2020, user Rennie Tinkerdork prints 3D frames and embellishes them with electronics. This one uses a Feather M4, Data Logger Featherwing, and DotStar and NeoPixel LEDs. In his Friday Fun blog post, Les P posts a series of free projects to do while you're at home, all from his Pi user section of Linux Format Magazine, including hacking Minecraft, creating GUI apps, and using Dropbox to share sensor data. RK Blog posts a tutorial on thermal printers for makers and programmers, covering a number of different thermal printers and including a section on CircuitPython compatibility. Diode Magazine posts part one of a series on learning MicroPython on the MicroBit, learn the basics of MicroPython on the MicroBit, and how to create some cool electronic gadgets along the way. Creatronics posted a tutorial on using MicroPython on the Fire Beetle ESP32 microcontroller board. Learn how to connect and get data from an MLX90393 magnetometer with an Adafruit Feather M0 running CircuitPython on the Learn MicroPython website. Check out learnmicropython.com for that and many more examples. This week, one new board was added to CircuitPython, the Seed Studio Xiao. If you are interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython, check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides on getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There were three new learn guides this week. First up, Melissa put together an epic guide on adding a single board computer to Blinka. Blinka allows you to use the CircuitPython libraries with various single board computers, but there are so many out there that not all of them are included. If your favorite one is missing, there is now a guide to walk you through how to get it added. Kevin documented a project demonstrating plotting the Clue's wide variety of onboard sensors and analog input pads using CircuitPython and Display.io. And John Park wrote up a guide including creating a no-touch hand wash timer with Clue, Display.io, and CircuitPython. We added two new CircuitPython libraries to the bundle this week, BLE MIDI and IBBQ bringing us to a total of 224 CircuitPython libraries. Head over to circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest bundle. A couple of updates from the CircuitPython team this week. Jeff has made progress on Protomatter and currently has it working on the NRF52840. It is adapted to work with Display.io. He's still dealing with a memory issue that has been difficult to sort out, but is making headway. Melissa published the aforementioned Learn Guide and then turned her attention to CircuitPython.org to add a few updates, including adding a date sorting feature so boards can be sorted by the date they were added. This allows you to find new boards more easily. The PyCon 2020 team announced planned talks, tutorials, posters, and much more available online. To participate, visit the PyCon US 2020 remote page and subscribe, or subscribe to the PyCon US 2020 YouTube channel they are aiming to begin releasing content around April 15th when the conference was scheduled to begin. And that is your Python hardware news for this week. Go to Adafruit Daily to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.